everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about harvest mice and what they like to keep as pets. They can weigh as little as like four grams, about four to six grams, and they're about five to seven centimeters in length as well. So they're pretty tiny, pretty fragile little creatures. And they have like a reddish brown coat with a white belly. So harvest mice, actually do build spherical nests above the ground as well they create can create these really cool shaped nests and they can do this not only just in nature but in captivity as well so that's quite an interesting thing about harvest mice and they also have a special tail which they use to grip things with so it's like a grasping tail so obviously in nature this could be used for like climbing through long grasses and they can use that as a really helpful way for them to get through vegetation like that. So harvest mice actually have an average lifespan of about one and a half to two years. So not massively long, but <laughs> maybe not the end. Yeah, that's about average for them. And they take random naps throughout the day they'll have these manic bursts of energy where they'll go crazy run around the cage running around on the wheel really quite manic and then they'll just sleep so they can be active both day and night <laughs> so harvest mice are actually very sociable creatures with each other and although they can get quite friendly with people come on so although harvest mice are very inquisitive, they can be quite timid as well and they're very fragile. They're so small so you have to be really careful with them. I'd say they're definitely more for watching rather than handling. Um, obviously I've got them out for the purpose of this video but generally they're quite fun to interact with. When they're in the cage they will be inquisitive and come like, sniff your hand and maybe climb on your hand a bit but generally for taking out the cage, like I'm obviously got them in the tube right now but they can be very jumpy and very fragile so probably not the best animals for children and like I say definitely better for watching rather than touching as such because they're so fragile and timid so although they can be quite tame you can see they're just so small so you do have to be really careful with them so yeah, they're very sociable creatures with each other. They like to live in like pairs or small colonies, if you like. So it is definitely essential that they have companionship and they can live in either all male groups or all female groups. They are also quite hard to sex due to their small size. So basically the males have like a little, like kind of swelling around the rear and that is one way to distinguish between the two and the females will have nipples but they can be covered with fur so it can still be quite hard to tell they're so small the easiest way to tell is looking through like a plastic tube for instance that's probably the easiest way to tell the difference between the two but it can be quite a challenge so harvest mice do need quite a lot of height space they're very active so generally a spacious home is going to be best for them large fish tank with a mesh lid would work and again, they can squeeze through such tiny spaces. So you're talking sort of quarter inch mesh to keep them in. So, because they can squeeze through really tiny spaces. But yeah, they're tree climbers. They need a lot of height space. Um, they're gonna love to climb things and explore. So definitely height space is something to consider. They need plenty of height space to mimic a natural habitat for them. So yeah, obviously anything kind of plastic best to be avoided, they will chew it. So you want to avoid any kind of plastic with harvest mice and like with most like small rodents really. And yeah, they could chew out of a plastic cage basically. And bad cages, again, not the best unless it's really, really tiny mesh because they will squeeze through it. So harvest mice, they're very, can be very active and very inquisitive animals, so they need lots of enrichment in the enclosure, different like levels, different things to climb up and different textures to explore. They're really, really inquisitive and will enjoy a wide variety of natural enrichment in the enclosure. Definitely making use of the height space as well with branches and twigs and that kind of thing. They'll love that. And of course, like a running wheel because they have such manic energy. 
Um, so also another thing to consider with the housing is plenty of nesting material. Like I said, I like to build like these really cool nest. So yeah, definitely providing lots of different substrates for that as well. So with harvest mice, the diet consists primarily of like seed and grain type feed, so especially focused on millet. They will eat other types of grains as well and a small amount of seed, but yeah, definitely primarily focused on millets, variety of millets. I just give mine like a basic um, mice mix, which I make myself, so that is what I feed mine on. But yeah, they can be quite picky with things, certainly with like fresh vegetables as well, they're quite picky. Because they're not true herbivores they will also eat like little grubs and stuff in nature so providing like another source of protein is recommended and also they can you know eat things like they love millet sprays they really do love them they can climb up them as well so a great enrichment activity as well and they could occasionally eat things like berries as well just other things that they would come across in nature and fresh branches are great another thing which again links in with the enrichment but will also give them something that which they might like to nibble on. So in terms of cleaning the accommodation, they are like they don't really smell particularly to harvest mice, but after a few months they will like acquire some kind of aroma in the enclosure. So like I would say every few months that it would be best to do a full clean out. You don't want to do it too often because that can stress them out, remove their scent trails and they won't like that too much. So not too often but at the same time you don't want to leave it too long because eventually the ammonia will build up but they produce quite a little amount of waste I would say compared to like maybe hamsters and gerbils so they don't really need cleaning as often but obviously every few months is quite good and it really depends ultimately on the size of accommodation you have as to how often needs cleaning and how many you have in a space as well that's quite a big factor in terms of how often to clean they have to be closely monitored for their behavior and you know any signs of aggressive chasing and nipping that kind of thing they could draw blood um, they can have quite serious fallouts we've had a few rifts with ours the um, both with the females and the males like it can kind of come and go really but just keeping a close eye on that and you know they can go for things like tails ears and you know they could get into more serious fights which could lead to nasty wounds and they could ultimately fight till death you know if they felt that way inclined so you have to really closely monitor their behavior they're best brought up with like their own kind if you like so if they are from the same litter they have a better chance of getting along and um, we have mixed with ours so ours were from mixed litters from a young age so if they'd been brought up together as well that would work but they can fall out even if they've been raised together see so, yeah, like i said we've had a few little fallouts here and there with ours overall they generally get along quite harmoniously and they are quite content with one another but they've gone through phases where you know maybe one will want to be the more dominant one if you like and that can lead to some aggression so you just want to make sure none of them are getting picked on and that generally they're quite content but obviously you know these things happen they it can go through phases where there'll be quite a bit of aggression and dominant behaviour so it's just that fine line between what's aggression and what's just you know being like dominant so yeah it's it's a tricky one really but yeah they're highly sociable so they are not gonna do particularly well by themselves they really do need the companionship to thrive so they're probably more classified as exotic animals it's not the kind of pet you would find in a pet shop but there are breeders here and there obviously you'd want to find a reputable one if you were going to go down the route of getting harvest mice um, and yeah I got I just want like a local advert so that's how I ended up with mine 
Um, but yeah, they've been really fascinating to be honest and they are really entertaining animals but obviously got to respect the fact that they are more like for watching and observing rather than handling. Like I say, they are quite timid and although they can be quite friendly and inquisitive, they're better really for watching. And yeah, the, the thing of them being quite hard to sex as well because they're so small and it can be a real challenge. So yeah, and I suppose the other thing of the fact that they can have these fallouts and a clan can suddenly break down even though they may have previously been you know well established group they can have fallouts and that is something which needs to be closely monitored so yeah another thing to consider with these animals but yeah overall really fascinating and probably plenty more we could talk about them but yeah so that's it for today so yeah thanks for watching and i will see you next time Bye.